Right, guys. So as I mentioned earlier, Dr. Hubert, I think he's just landed or is on the verge of landing. So he's running. Uh, he's running a bit late, obviously. Um, so he might be able to join, but a few minutes later. In the meantime, we can continue. Um, I would like to introduce myself. My my name is Aryan Kojgave. I currently work with the Delhi and Paris offices of the MBA Center. Um, I got uh, I got accepted at uh, HEC, LBS, ESEC, uh, um, uh, Duke, and was waitlisted at no at uh, Northwestern Kellogg and Cornell University last year. Um, I've been I've been uh, I've been told that uh, I've been told that you guys are interested to sort of pursue masters and you know MBA programs from highly coveted universities around, and we are here to help so uh since it's since it's uh since it it's just the two of you i think the best is to uh take the question answer approach uh there is hitika there is aman i'm there so you all can just ask your questions and we'll be you know able to uh, answer them yeah i think aryan uh, why why don't you explain your journey first let's say uh, your approach towards the gmat uh, your apprehensions okay. regarding the yeah. application process yeah yeah definitely definitely we can do that but uh, you know it will be better if if uh, if i get to know uh, if i get to know which course they are planning for you know yeah so yeah that, yeah so that it becomes a bit more relevant so maybe if we could you know maybe if we can begin with gorav and then we can speak to faraz since they are just the uh, since they are only two here so i think it's better to give them exclusivity so so i can probably start so yeah. i'm at a very nascent stage uh, to be honest like uh, i'm preparing for the gre i haven't written the exam okay um, so i come from an accounting or finance background i'm a chartered accountant uh, okay. and then i worked uh, in the big fours for some time then transition to uh, industry uh, i was working at honeywell for almost a year and a half and right now again i'm working with siemens so um, i've largely been more in a finance or an accounting role um, okay. and i just thought that you know maybe later uh, sometime later when you want to move up the ladder move, move into a more Uh, leadership roles or more management oriented roles it'd be good to um, get some flavor of um, a, a business administration uh, as as a study point so that's why i was i started preparing for it um, obviously because i've already um, done a professional course i'm more inclined towards uh, pursuing a one year mba or a two year course that's traditionally done in the us mm -hmm. so i'm focusing more on um the colleges in europe um maybe in india as well and i think now a few colleges in the us have also started with the one year programs but i'm not sure um whether it's a good idea to pursue it in the us mm -hmm. so that's so pretty, so, yeah so the propensity so from what i understand the propensity is more towards uh, indian and european mba programs yeah because, yeah yeah i mean uh Uh, I mean, yeah, that's uh, that's okay. all right. So, uh, you, like you mentioned, you've just uh, started preparing for the GRE, if I'm not wrong. Correct. Today. Yeah. Right. For how long have you been preparing? So it's been a couple of months. There was a break because I was unwell, uh, okay. and then I also was preparing for the job interviews. Like I had a couple of job interviews, so there was a break of two months but yeah it's it was it, it's been like two two and a half months of preparation uh -huh. so, okay so, yeah okay just two two and a half months so when do you plan to sort of commence your mba next year or probably uh, you know you want to apply next year or and start in 24 um, you, i, I think so um, like step one is to get a good score Uh -huh. And then, if I get a good score, then I think I can start um, next applying next year. Um, yeah, that's that's the plan. Okay, so apply. Yeah. All right. Okay, Gaurav. Right. So you don't want to like uh, commence your uh, MBA next year, like from like in twenty three. 
Uh, no, it'll be a little difficult considering the application deadlines because we're uh, starting in December, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think one of the things that uh, happens is that if you apply in R three, then the chances are less, right? Yeah, that's 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 very true. That's yeah. very true because most of the seats get sucked up. Yeah. Uh, any, anyways, then if if you are planning to sort of uh, give it time, then you mm -hmm. can actually then you can actually you know uh, spend time on you know, each of the each of the comp each of the you know two, two components of the test and also on the AWS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. it is said that you know it doesn't carry any value or weightage, but certainly it does because uh, when the adcom when the adcom sort of goes through your uh, applications. And when you don't have a very promising AWS score, they understand mm -hmm. that you know you are not the one writing your applications. Right. Yeah. Right. So this is something that because because see, generally I also took the GRE, got a very good score as well. So, mm -hmm. but but uh, from my own experience, I can say that when it comes to the quant section of the GRE, uh, I mean it is, it is. I don't think it is. You know, um, it is it is difficult like the quant section of GMAT. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. I, I would I still wouldn't consider it to be a cakewalk, but yes, mm -hmm. it is still pretty easy. Um yeah. verbal is a verbal is a bone in the throat. It's actually mm -hmm. a mass it is actually a massive bone in the throat. Um, mm -hmm. yes. So that is where you know I think uh, that that is where one needs to uh, uh, spend time because from uh, from what uh, from my own approach before uh, before sort of uh, before sort of taking the gre i took i had taken the gmat twice and mm -hmm. i had scored 49 and 50 on the quant section uh, in, bo mm -hmm. in both my gmat attempts so yeah. i wasn't practicing verbal at all probably that is the reason why i couldn't end up scoring a perfect 170 uh, sorry i i wasn't uh, practicing uh, gre quants at all mm -hmm. and probably that is the reason why i didn't end up you know getting a uh, proper 170 i got a 167 mm. but yeah but this shows that even if you sort of do not focus on the quant as much as on the verbal part you are still going to get a good score uh, yeah. on the quant section of the gre but yes verbal is the real game changer here and i think uh, i think and you have time you have decent bit of time and i think um, apart from apart from the regular class material, if if you can use like you know different different materials to practice verbal, I think I think it's gonna be it's gonna be okay. I mean, yeah. obviously, if you are eyeing a top MBA, a, a score of I guess three twenty five plus or probably three twenty eight or above becomes you know a necessity here, along with the other components of your profile. Yeah. Also, is age a factor? Like, I think in European schools, maybe they have a higher tolerance for people who come with more experience. Whereas in American schools, they see like the average age is around twenty-six or something. Or yeah, yeah, that is true and untrue to some extent. Because when it comes to when it comes to the age factor, yes, I mean, uh, uh, you will find people with rich vein of experience in European and like English MBAs, but the case is the case is similar in America as well. It's not like it's uh, you know even in even in England it's not like or in Europe it's not like you'll only find people who have you know six or seven plus years or probably eight eight plus years of work experience. It's a good mix of both. The average the average work ex for a normal MBA program. Uh, for, for a top-notch regular MBA program is around four to five years, as we all know. Mm. So yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, you are going to find, you know, uh, you are going to find people with, uh, you know, different varying uh, amount of work experiences, uh, work experience, both in the United States and also in European MBAs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But generally, do you have like people who um, say go to the US and come back to India after completing it, or generally people plan to stay there? Because I think if you pursue it from the US, there's a very high cost involved. Yeah, right? Right. So people generally prefer to stay over there for. Um, yes, uh, yes. So if you want to if you want to recover your ROI, unless it's a company sponsored program where the company is absorbing you back after your MBA, 
it's always it's always vital to stay in the us because a us mba would nearly cost you i mean if if you do not have a scholarship obviously it is going to it, it's going to pinch your pocket and you know it's going to cost around 2 crore rupees i mean yeah. uh, all inclusive so yeah. yeah you know and that kind of roi right after mba you cannot expect that in india you know you break even cannot be expected in the us as well in the first year but yes i mean uh, uh, it's always better and sort of it becomes you know i, I, I mean but still it varies from person to person there mm-hmm. are people, there are people who eventually want to pursue mba in europe or in the us and want to work in the middle east because of you know uh, because of uh, you know truck loads of money and no taxes so that yeah. is also a thing that is also a thing and it has become a it, it has become a trend right now yeah yeah people who wish to work in consulting or like <coughs> uh banking they are they are also preferring uh, uh uae dubai a lot even after going to you know all the best business schools around so i think so i think uh, i mean um, if you are willing to put in so much money and you know if you are willing to travel to the us for your mba i think it's better to work there for a couple of years from what i understand you don't plan to settle down in the us or in any other country apart from india um, yeah as a flow that's the plan but let's see yeah i mean everyone says that i mean <laughs> <laughs> i say the same to my parents but i don't think that's going to be possible yeah I mean, you never know because I have family members who are residing in the U.S. and different different mm-hmm. parts of the world. They also said the same thing when they were going for their higher studies or their or for their MBA, and now they are you know, leading a successful and a very happy life. Yeah, yeah. Um. Right then, uh, Hitika, would you like to add something, or maybe Aman? uh yes definitely uh thank you aryan so gorav uh, as you are looking for one year mba program your preferred location is europe uh, as what i understood like you are experienced candidate who does a good amount of experience so, like can you can you explain about your experience your total work ex and the colleges you are looking for in europe um yeah sure so like uh, i worked at price for a house after completing the ca course for like two and a half years and then one and a half years at honeywell so i mean after completing the ca course i have like roughly four years of experience and prior to that i did uh three years of articleship so i'm not sure whether that counts as work ex for mba but that's also from awc okay so as it now you do have three and a half four years of work ex so if you start your mba uh, generally in europe uh, all good colleges uh, they do have january intake also so january mm-hmm. 24 so you you can you can target that one or that one as well or if you would like to go for uh, august september 2024 you can you can go for that also so by by that time you will be having like five and a half or six years of experience if you target 2024 mm-hmm. five and a half something yeah so that will be the ideal experience for the top european colleges like in card hec iese or if if you want to do one year in uk then cambridge oxford or lbs so uh so are you are you looking for january 2024 intake or the the fall 2024 i think for uh, again jan the timelines will be march right so uh, of deadline will be march second round of deadline will be in may so right from here like 5 or 6 month you got if you want to submit your application in round 2 Yeah. So that's the that's the ideal timeline. I think five or six month, uh, two two months. Uh, like you can you can start working on your GRE uh, as you are already working, and you can start your application also. So both things can go hand in hand. Five six month ideal timeline. You can submit your application in round two by by May. So you will you will listen from colleges by by June or July. So if you if you get accepted, uh, then you can start in Jan twenty twenty four. i think three colleges which uh, which starts in january in U- in europe imd hec and ncrd and uh, the uh, the three or four colleges which are good college like 
Cambridge, Oxford, LBS, and IESE. They have September 2024 it takes. So you can you can target those colleges as, as well and just submit your application in round one, which will be in August, September. So starting your GRE preparation in full fledged and your application from now onwards, targeting five or six months will be the ideal approach. Yeah. So and are, there like, sorry, yeah. are there like colleges that um, specialize into um, a particular field, for instance, like people say that if you want to get into consulting, then you should get into NCR, um, or if you want to get into, say, finance, you should probably um, target an LBS or like Chicago Food School. So are there like um, colleges for particular industries or like that has um, famous alumni pool, which will probably help you in that particular industry if you want to, if you have like... In CR, pretty known for consulting. Uh, that that's the fact. There are almost uh, 45, 50 percent of the class end up working in consulting, especially in tier 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 one consulting form MBB. So they got uh, a very huge uh, alum uh, network uh, all over the world, and especially in Europe. Like if you if you want to work in Europe, uh, the prime locations are London, or if you want to work uh, like most of the candidates uh, end up working in Dubai or in Netherlands. Uh, so, or in Singapore, because they do have Singapore campus and you can switch uh, between Singapore campus and uh, Fontainebleau Paris campus. So LBS, uh, it's um, not, I will not say like pure finance or pure consulting college, like one third of the class goes into finance, one third of cl class go goes into consulting. So if you if you mainly want to work in London, NCRT, uh, HEC and uh, LBS can be the right choice. In CR, like that can give you the global network as well. So all, all, all these are good colleges. You can you can target any industry, whether it is consulting, finance, or product 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 management or marketing. All right. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, maybe Aryan, you can speak with uh, Faraz. Uh, he's here. Right. Hi, Faraz. I think there's some network issue because his mic is not turned on yet. Yeah, I I, I didn't hear from from him. Yeah, last time around as well. Yes. So uh, Anshuman is here. Hi, Anshuman. Hi, Aman. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good as well. So. Uh, Two of your students are here, uh, Gaurav and Faraz. Uh, we couldn't speak with Faraz, but yeah, we no. were speaking with Hello. Him. Yeah. Sorry, there was some technical glitch, okay. I guess. Uh -huh. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. We, we figured that out. It's all right. Uh, yeah. Can you yeah. just yeah? Can you just uh, begin by you know <coughs> give a brief introduction, and we'll take it forward from there. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I I. I, I basically graduated in 2019 uh, from the uh, B Tech Information Technology and Computer Computer Science, and I have around like three years of experience working for Geo Platforms Limited uh, as a business analyst. I'm working currently, so like I'm aiming for uh, Jan 2024 intake uh, for MBA colleges. Uh -huh. So I had like a doubt in my mind that uh, should I prepare for uh, GMAT or focus on my profile building. Uh, going for professional certificates and uh, you know like uh, building my strong portfolio see obviously when it comes to a good mba when it comes to hmm. any good business masters or any good mba program first and hmm. foremost you need to have a really strong you know gmat score yeah. or or okay. your, your any management test that you want to take provided the college hmm. accepts that test so yeah gmat and gre uh, is first and foremost but along with it, since you're planning for the uh, uh, January 24 intake, as you mentioned, um, yeah. it is imperative and you know it, it is of utmost importance that um, attention is given to both simultaneously. So like we follow this approach, we ask the students to work simultaneously on their GMAT and also on their applications because eventually they are not just going to be looking at the GMAT. Yes, it's a major indicator of your uh, prospects, but yes, ultimately they want a very well-rounded profile. You know, 
with yeah. Uh, yeah they want to you know when they when they are building a classroom they they want to you know have people coming with different sorts of backgrounds having worked in a variety of industries you know not just through work experiences but also mm-hmm. through internships volunteer work you know experience right, yeah. and all the other small factors you know that mm-hmm. add tremendously to your chances so yes i mean it's obviously better to sort of focus on both the things simultaneously maybe you know we'll be able to guide you better if you can you know uh, tell us your preferred programs um, and you know if you have a prospective list of schools yeah basically i'm aiming for like top 30 mba colleges i don't have a preferred location like i'm op- open to all the location like wherever i get the best college okay 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 as long as the university as long as the university is good i mean uh, you don't really yeah. Uh, have have an issue with the location yeah, yeah fine yeah. that's all right but i you know we'll uh, we would still recommend you to sort of zero down to a zero down to a couple of uh, you know countries yeah. basically maybe uh, like like your friend uh, like your friend uh, gorav just mentioned that you know he's inclined towards mbas uh, mba programs in india and in yeah. europe likewise likewise i just you know Uh, i'm just yeah, i have like, some uh, like uh, preferred like colleges a few of the colleges i have listed out uh, mm-hmm. done some of my uh, some of the research like uh, th- there's one friend of mine uh, mm-hmm. he's a school friend like he's doing from watten business school uh, okay, usa wow. yeah so watten is there in some of the colleges from uk cambridge london business school okay okay yeah. so yeah the the top ones yes okay. so um uh, like aman mentioned like aman mentioned there are schools uh, that uh, that accept uh, students uh, that have a january uh, that have a january intake but okay. that number is relatively less as compared to you know the other schools that only have a september intake so the okay. idea is, the idea is simple uh, we can apply to sort of uh, let's say let's say we make a list of 10 or let's say we make a list of 8 hypothetically okay. so we can apply to 50% of the schools um, you know for the january 24 intake and the remaining for the you know september uh, absolutely that's 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 the best way this is something that we do with uh, candidates who uh, you know who uh, are in the preparation stage of gmat and or gre and have the deadlines like in in one month so that is what we do pre g pre gre pre gmat we apply to sort of three four schools and post likewise likewise we apply to another three four schools so yeah this is what this is what we can be doing for you um uh, aman maybe if you uh, maybe you know you would want to add something uh, so uh, generally the january intake programs uh, are not uh, available in us they are uh, in europe that's true yeah. so, uh, like if you are targeting the colleges which you mentioned like lbs or wharton or any us specific college so they, they all starts in fall fall intake most okay. of the colleges if you if you go for one year mba program and a few only uh, only a few colleges provide one year mba in us and uh, their intake starts in june so yeah. late june or august but not january So uh, like, uh, like uh, one more question I had in my mind. Uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, yeah, since I've not started the preparation for like GMAT or uh, GRE, like what should I focus on, GMAT or GRE? If I'm targeting MBA schools. Yeah, it totally depends on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Like, MBA programs. It, it's clearly mentioned that you know you can apply with either of the. You know, yeah. Take so either. Faraz, of the, uh, yeah. So for us, a good thing to do would be. to probably take a mock of each okay. and see what you're more comfortable with mm-hmm. because both the test test largely similar things especially on quant they 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 are different you know when it comes to concepts as on verbal so just find out for yourself which whichever you feel more at home with you can start your preparation you know for that particular test okay Okay. Colleges do not have any preference uh, you can take either of them uh, it's totally up to you uh, which one you want to take which one uh, you feel more comfortable if you are good in uh, quant you can go with uh, gmat if you are uh, like average in quant maybe gre will be the better option if you are good in verbal then go for gre 
it is uh, like this is what i found gre math is relatively easy as compared of gmat yeah, oh, yeah got it yeah yeah so uh -huh. but uh, so then, I, there are few things to consider you can reach out to me post this session we can have a more informed uh, probably you know as to so yes quant quant thing is gre quant is easier when it comes to let's say the difficulty of the hardest questions that GRE can test you on is slightly easier than quant. But at the same time, verbal is more vocab centric on yes. GRE. And yes. if there is something that puts you off, then there is something we need to consider as well because almost 50% of, of the verbal section in GRE is very vocab heavy. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep that in mind as well. If you're okay with learning those many new words, putting in that effort every day, and you, you show that vocab won't be an issue, then GRE does become a very good option because GMAT is harder on both quant and verbal otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Arsimran. Can you hear me? Hi, I can hear you. Hi, I think everyone. Yeah, so Harsimran is, is preparing for GMAT currently, and I think she has her GMAT during the next couple of weeks. Yeah, Harsimran? Right. Right. So yeah. she had a few questions and queries regarding the timing of her GMAT and some other questions regarding the applications to some of the deferred MBA programs. So Parsimran, you can probably right. share your doubts and queries. Yeah. Yeah. I think yes. we'll help you out with that. Um so I'll be applying for the deferred MBA programs and uh, my um post mba career goal is uh, majorly social impact as of now mm -hmm. and i'm uh, a final year uh, student pursuing btech in computer science um so the deadlines for most of the programs that i'll be applying for berkeley hash program uh wharton program um and uh Berk, um uh darden program uh yes. these have deadlines um in, in the month of april yeah yes uh, but there is one program uh, which is very uh, known for uh, uh, for its social impact, that is Yale's. Uh, but its um, uh, deadlines are uh, same as for the general MBA. Yeah. So um, considering that I am not, I'm, I'm, I don't feel that I'm close to my GMAT target score as of now. Like I'm putting in the work, but it still feels a bit far-fetched um to take the test bec uh, before 21st because after 20 between 22nd to let's say first week of jan i have some other uh, commitments that i can't um, um neglect so there's this gap that could uh, be taken and otherwise i mean i have two options if i take my gmat before that or if i take my gmat after that let's say in jan the only thing that I would be um, uh, testing would be Yale, um, you know, to apply uh, in the round two of Yale. Now, when I joined the Yale's webinar this week, they clearly mentioned that for the inter uh, for the deferred MBA uh, students, uh, they don't uh, they won't lose any individual chances in any of the rounds. But for general MBA, they they would suggest uh, people to um, apply in round one or round two. So I um, is it is it actually true? for Indians uh, because we are an overrepresented uh, community or um, um, should I just focus on one deadline that is in April for mostly all these schools, including Yale's? Sure, okay. Uh, yes. Harsimran, Harsimran, before I begin elaborating, uh, you know, I would, mm -hmm. I, would uh, I have a few questions for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why deferred MBA and why not a uh, regular master's? Right, right. Um, Considering, I mean, um, since my second year of um, um, undergrad degree, I just realized that I I'm want sorry, to make I'm, a shift. I'm sorry, I'm barging in, but where are you currently studying? Uh, SRM, uh, yeah. IST, KTR, main campus. Um, so it's a tier two college, right? And uh, in my second year, I uh, sort of uh, started uh, experimenting a lot with a lot of internships, different domains, different um, roles. And um, it took me about a year to um, start my work in the nonprofit sector. And before that, I've been working as a web developer in machine learning in AI and cloud computing as well. And I already do have an offer for uh, a cloud computing job. It's just that I really, really want to make a shift and having that deferred MBA, uh, knowing already that I want to work in the so as a social impact consultant because I've worked already in my volunteering work and as well as um, I've worked in a few startups as well. 
um as a strategy consultant and um um in in the non technical side that i've enjoyed that work more thoroughly and i i think that my uh, uh, getting that seat reserved already in that sector knowing that i really want to make that shift and i really want to get that um hike in my salary as well as a fresher uh, itself mm-hmm. i think it would be really um helpful for me uh, so that i can experiment in these 2 to 5 years if i if i defer my seat if i get a seat and then i can continue my mba the only difference is um between like among other mba uh, among other deferred mba programs in yales would be that yales first year of mba is supposed to be uh, is supposed to start just after undergraduation so that sort of changes the 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 mindset that i had um about um you know of financial documents and all that related work because for deferred mba other programs it's sort of um, different so yeah that is i think one of the questions that um i mean i could answer why deferred mba and why yale um why i'm considering yale and other programs uh uh-huh. okay that's 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 uh, that's all right um but but see when it comes to when it comes to all these deferred mba programs Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah. Before I continue, you know, I I would just like to know your average mock scores. I mean, I'm pretty sure you're taking mocks. So right, right. How, how much are you averaging? Um, it's it's it always comes down between five hundred to five ninety. My friend, I'm sorry <laughs> to say this, but with five hundred yes. and five ninety, I know that. I know that. Effort MBA programs. If you are an Indian applicant, you need seven right. thirty. or above 730 right right i applied i applied to all these programs last year with a 328 gre not a single interview call mhm not yeah. a single, not a single interview call yeah so i know last I know. year i think mm-hmm. uh, yeah i think i applied yeah this year in the month of april i was applying yeah and then i got dejected and then i got dejected and i stopped applying i i stuck to my my plans of you know sort of go, go right on. right yeah. because i had offers from all the best masters programs so yeah i mean it it mm-hmm. it, it it would make a lot of sense if you uh, currently at this stage uh, you know if you are averaging uh, you know in the range of 500 yeah days, it's better to give yourself time since mm-hmm. uh, you know, because from what i understand uh, you are quite sure about going for a deferred mba Because, yeah. yeah i it, mean obviously uh-huh. i understand your point there's uh-huh. definitely ki indians ke liye i mean yeah acceptance uh-huh. ke liye 730 plus chahiye yeah, and for scholarship it has to be even greater than 750 because yeah, they it increase to... the average for indians and uh-huh. i i truly understand that See, um, when it comes to the uh-huh. average score for indians right you know, when it comes so you know when we talk about deferred mba programs the general average score is around 730 only Like, mm-hmm, in respect mm-hmm. to nationality, whether you are an Indian or you know you're, um, yeah, or an African, it, it doesn't really matter because see, between a normal MBA and between mm-hmm. a deferred MBA, there is only one difference. When it comes to a normal MBA, if you are mm-hmm. applying with let's say five to six years of work experience, the the university already knows that okay, this person has worked at Deloitte, this person has worked at KPMG, and you know, uh, mm-hmm. he has written in his applications that he sort of wants to work at goldman sachs and he's thinking that you know this program is the ideal launch pad for me they will right. believe, it is easier to believe him rather than uh, rather than to believe an applicant you know who's mm-hmm. a fresh and sort of writes in his applications about his career goals that yes these are the companies that i want to work for then mm-hmm. the committee you know then the admission uh, admission committee doesn't know anything i mean if you have a job offer fine right that's all, that's all you can sh- show so that is why here it becomes more difficult deferred mba is always more difficult to crack right you know? agreed yes. yeah so uh, but since you are quite sure about going for it then i would say you know uh, just leave everything behind and just focus on your gmat or your gre mm-hmm. right yes. because you need to score above 330 you know gre or probably above 332 you never know and mm. you know comes to the gmat 730 is the minimum that you have to score because right. yeah i mm. have a friend i i know who, who you know he who, he got into the yale program he scored mm-hmm. 730 on the gmat got it okay. yeah 
from Mumbai. So, so y- yes, Anshuman. Yeah, just want to butt in here. So, yes, there is something that we do have a lot of clarity on that it requires a kind of a score improvement, which makes her wonder whether she should go for, for probably you know, applying for the Yale deadline that is coming up, right? Mm-hmm. That that is entirely the question. Is it worth right, right. probably considering at this stage, probably having mm-hmm. a crack at? Right? No, that no, is the no, question. No, no. Arsimran, I think I think that would be too far fetched because right, yeah. from, from 500, 590 level, a massive jump of you know probably 150 points is what you mm. need at this stage, or like even more than that. I, I'm you know I'm I'm considering 590 as your score. So and I I seriously mm-hmm. do think it, it's going to be you know a, it, it, it it's a it's a wise decision to sort of stick to Yale. I mean you can still mm-hmm. consider other deferred MBA programs. And at the same point of time, you should be applying to other master's programs as well. See, yeah, I understand. Yeah. See, I understand you. Uh, you want to sort of uh, have clarity. You know, you want to be. Yeah. You no, know, see, if you if you do manage to get into these deferred MBA programs, you're sure about your future. That yes, for three four years or like minimum two years, I'm working at this right. company, and then I'm going for my MBA. It is right. the best option available. Trust me, it is the best option that is available. But at mm-hmm. the same time, one needs to be very realistic. Right, right. No. Agreed, agreed. Absolutely. My it's other like, question would be, yeah. um, um, I mean, since that I considering that I have spent a lot of time, I've been spending a lot of time in this GMAT journey, and uh-huh. it has been, you know, a, a different journey for me altogether. But mm-hmm. the point is, um, I've already taken a lot of time, and I'm ready to take more time, and you know, obviously get the score because I know that then that wouldn't stand a chance because for general MBA, there might be an exception with a low score for Indians, maybe. But for deferred MBA, I am not ex- accept- uh, expecting any sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. My question would be for Yale, um, um, since they mentioned in the webinar day before yesterday that um, I think one student asked this question that uh, would the chances um, reduce for an individual or for an international student for the deferred MBA program, um, if they apply in the round three, and they were the the answer was pretty much uh, like most of the students, um, um, you know, international as well, they apply in round three, um, final year students because of their application process in college work and all of that. Uh-huh. So uh, we do not think that there is any um, any sort of um, you know difference between the rounds for the deferred MBA students. But yeah, for general MBA, it's different. That's what they said. So I mean, my question is, should I even keep Yale for round three in my mind? Would that make sense? Because Yale's social mm-hmm. impact um, um, mm-hmm. program is something that really interests me. And it, it it is the fact that it is different from others is sort of appealing to me as well that you you come uh, here, uh, learn the core skills, then you work for two to four years, and then you curate your own program for the second year of your MBA. So, that's, yeah. that's very very true. But you know, like you like you just mentioned that. Like you just like you just. Uh, I'm sorry, I got a call. Uh, like yeah. you mentioned, like like you mentioned that you know, you were you are in talks with. You know the Yale adcom, and you know they've mm-hmm. said you know apply whenever you want to apply. But yes. this, all this is false. Majority That's of the seats, good. majority of the seats get you know sucked up in the first two rounds itself. Got it. Yeah, mm. yeah. They they only say this. They only say this. Mm. But why? You know, I understand that you want to you know work as an impact consultant. But for that, you can go to any good program in the US. And you can yeah. still mm-hmm. working in uh, impact consulting. See, when it comes mm-hmm. to this, there are a lot of deferred MBA programs. E- eventually, mm-hmm. there is a program at Northwestern Kellogg as well, which is a very, right, very right. it's called the Kellogg Future Leaders Program. Right. I didn't mention that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'll be applying for that. Absolutely. There is a Booth Scholars Program as well. And all these, uh, I mean, offered by Chicago Booth. So all these mm-hmm. programs are really, really good. You know? Right. The Wharton's advanced uh, advanced access program, but mm-hmm. yes, these programs uh, require you to have, uh, you know, an offer letter from a top tier company. Domain mm-hmm. also matters. Company reputation, company name matters a lot. 
okay mm-hmm. like, like i mentioned you know the difference between somebody who has already worked at a particular set of companies and somebody who has written in his applications or is just you know commencing his corporate mm-hmm. journey Right. of application so it, it makes a huge amount of difference if you have a big name and a good profile you know uh, before before even applying right got it yeah so this is something that you know you need to be mindful of and also at the same point of time your gmat it has to be you know around 730 or above 730 above 730 is strongly recommended but got yes I, i do have a suggestion for you and mm-hmm. i guess my colleagues will also agree to this that deferred mba uh, you know uh, please don't take it otherwise but yes, yeah because it's my it, it's my duty to you know sort of uh, pass yeah, on yeah. information yeah, sure. you know the chances of admission you know are very bleak for mm. indian for indian applicants you know when it comes to right. these deferred mba programs because see indians um, you know one indian outshine uh, outshines the other indian and like you mm-hmm. mentioned we are an over represented over represented community absolutely so yeah sure, just to combat this and just to be on the safer side you know i think uh, you should also be parallelly uh, you know you should you should parallelly start thinking about masters as well mm-hmm. yeah business okay. is probably an mim or like, like yeah, yeah. if you want to work in the consulting sector i'm considering duke program duke's program yeah lovely i mean from yeah. what i understand from what i understand you want to study in america right right Okay, then you can also target the Kellogg program. Kellogg, Northwestern Kellogg has this program called MSMS. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh it's called Masters of Science and Management Studies. It's a ten-month STEM MIM program being offered by Kellogg. And you know, like you mentioned, a uh, deferred MBA. It's not exactly deferred MBA, but this program allows you to get your masters first. Okay. Mm. Then you could work for two, three years. Okay. Mm. And then you can. apply for the kellogg mba without any sort of uh, without um, you know as as a graduate as a graduate of the msms program you will get the mba program because this okay. program, even if you go through the website it is called msms plus mba program it is okay. designed for people who who want a one stop solution for their masters and also for their mba so mba admission is going to be hassle free completely hassle free you will not have to submit another test score again right you, right yeah um, if your grades if your kellogg grade if your kellogg msms grades um, are not very promising they can ask you to sort of uh, submit a test score but mm-hmm. it is not required for msms graduates only only you know just one interview is done uh, that's it so this is another this is another very very good program that i think uh, that aligns to your career goals as well but then again kellogg kellogg also you will need a 720 plus gmat even for the msms program yeah yeah absolutely i mean 730 oh, yeah. is the benchmark 730 and 40 is the benchmark yeah. that i've set yeah um yeah That's so great. it wouldn't make sense uh, to apply for these programs without um, that score um, obviously um, um and actually uh, the advice i appreciate that you gave um, that obviously the chances are pretty bleak and i have i've been pretty much aware of that considering mm-hmm. that i've been um, you know mm-hmm. um been on this journey since my sophomore year so um actually one of the dardens um um alumni um who applied for the general mba and he was an, uh, he's an indian so he also uh, told me the same thing that mostly unfortunately the deferred mba um is designed for the us kids but it's not like they do not allow uh, you know but they they do prefer the us kids more or the ones who already have been studying in their institution for their undergrad Yeah. but definitely they you know if if your profile really stands out then mm-hmm. i mean chances are more bleak than the general mba pool but definitely yeah. i mean there is more competition it's more challenging it's more yeah. challenging yeah. Because, yeah no i get that i get that absolutely but, but then but then from what i understand the propensity mm-hmm. from yeah. your end is the united states so and, right. and you are a non uh, you know you don't have a business background so you know you can apply to all the schools you know uh, mm. uh, um um virginia darden school has a program right a, i i i um it it yeah. has the same deadline in april yeah no no i'm not talking about deferred mba i'm talking about masters the, the acha okay that yeah. i didn't know yeah i'm talking about masters now even cornell university has got business masters you know michigan has got business masters you mm-hmm. are doing a four year degree 
university of southern california you know university of texas uh, mm. uh, yeah uh, texas at austin all these all these programs are you know all these programs give you roi good amount of roi these Got are mm. purely good programs of all the business masters programs only thing here is that they don't accept indians with 3 year bachelor degrees uh, they want indians to have 4 year bachelor degrees so you are a correct fit okay and uh, i mean i'm pretty sure you've heard of uh, you've heard about georgetown as well i have yeah but yeah, not so, the program though yeah 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 georgetown mm-hmm. has got a plethora of business masters programs and you mm-hmm. can if you want to work in consulting you know you can go for a business masters program a uh, program and you will get a job in consulting okay got it uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, um just for your information um mm-hmm. Georgetown has even waived off GMAT GRE requirement for people applying you know in this admission cycle sorry could you um, repeat yourself Georgetown has waived okay. off GMAT GRE requirements for people you know applying in uh, this in this particular admission cycle so mm-hmm. you know you have you have a lot of options you know right. uh, and i think you shouldn't be constrained you you shouldn't be keeping yourself constrained uh, uh, only to deferred mbas mm-hmm. Yeah, con- considering how considering how difficult and challenging it is to uh, to get a good deferred MBA program, right? But yes, um, and, and that is the reason why I think you should also be uh, uh, considering a couple of you know uh, business masters programs as well. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Because uh, also one more thing, when it comes to the business masters programs, not all these schools expect you to have a seven hundred or a seven twenty plus. Uh, uh gmat gmat so uh, because you know mm-hmm. uh, we, we are just discussing programs so uh, only kellogg you know when it comes to the masters programs only northwestern kellogg wants you to have a 720 plus or probably yeah or, or probably a 325 plus gre rest all the other programs be it cornell or be it duke or be it uh, be it let's say um um michigan you know if you if you have a gmat score in the range of let's say 670 to 700 you have a you know you have decent chances got it got it yeah, yeah. do you have any questions no i think i'm done with my questions thank you okay and if you if you still want to you know have this discussion you can you know you can connect with aman itika or myself anytime sure sure okay. um um gorab faraz do you yeah, guys yeah. have questions for us yeah, sorry one on one scheduled will uh, with uh, all of them so i think that she can discuss uh, all these things maybe. okay yes you guys are there uh, the one on one is plan gmat score everything yeah yeah, yeah. That, then it's cool i mean they they had their one on ones now itself it seems however it, it it's okay i mean pleasure pleasure interacting with all of you all and you know you i'm pretty sure you all must be having a few questions so obviously we can look at these questions during the one on one thank you thank you so much for taking out time for this appreciate no, it no worries. it was a pleasure interacting with you all yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you harsh yeah. thank you thank you aryan aman if you can just you know kind of wait up here yeah sure sure, sure. sure. uh hi anshul I don't know if Mansi has joined. Uh, no, she she didn't. Only only three of uh, your students joined. Yeah. Oh yes, Mansi Mansi is here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before we end this, I so Mansi is just kind of unwell. But hi, Mansi, can you hear me? I can. I can. Yeah. Hi. So Mansi is currently, you know, preparing for EA, and uh, you know. Uh, and her questions and queries would be from that perspective regarding the programs uh-huh. that she's targeting so any any questions that that has been doing rounds mansi that you wanted to get kind of get a bit of clarity on you can please shoot um so i've shortlisted two or three programs where the ea is accepted specifically keeping in mind that i'm looking at a program that is for somebody who has about 12 to 15 years of experience So the ones that I've shortlisted are the uh, is the Stanford MSF program, and there's an MIT Sloan program. That's the one I'm interested in. Um, I just want to get a sense of what are the EA ranges that would be acceptable there. 
Uh, hi, Mansi. Aryan, I think I can take this question because the very similar case uh, I worked with uh, just two days back. Uh, so one of our students, uh, like she's from Spain, Claudia, she got into accepted in this Stanford MSX program and her EA score is 164. Okay. So for the Stanford MSX, the EA score which you, which you need to target, uh, that is 156 or I will say for the Indian candidate, it's 158 or above. So if you are 160 or 161, you will be good. So just make your target 160, 161, but uh, at least it should be 158 or above. So that's for the Stanford MSX. For MIT Sloan, uh, I think 156, 158 will be the will be the good score. Got it. So you're saying yeah. anywhere between 150 to 165 is what one should be looking at least targeting that much. Uh, 150 will not be the ideal score. Uh, yeah. At least target 156. Got it. Yeah. If you're going for executive MBA, then 151, 152 is fine. But for MIT Sloan, uh, 156 will be fine. But for Stanford MSX, you need higher. Because most of the candidates, uh, because their class size is very small, and they accept all those candidates who does at least 158, 159. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions regarding regarding uh, with college EA? Uh, I think I think we can take it. No, nothing currently. Thank you. Uh, okay. So Anshuman, she was having only these questions. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Mansi. If if you had just that kind of you know, please take test and get better soon. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm logging off. Yeah? Thanks. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Ujwal. Uh, hi, Anjuman. Am I audible? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so, Ujwal, if you had any queries regarding your application, rega anything that you had, you know, that you wanted to kind of get discussed or addressed uh, besides uh, your GMAT prep, which is ongoing. So, Ujwal is currently, uh, you know, hitting a score of between 700 to 760 on the mocks, right, Ujwal? That yeah. would be the rough uh, kind of the. There's a rough range right now. The latest one was 760. Yeah. Uh, if you have any queries with regards to, in in case you want to get a better better uh, better clarity on which program probably makes more sense for you than the others, uh, this is the right platform. Which will if you have any such questions. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, can I just tell about my profile and then probably? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, so I am a 2017 pass out. I did my BTEC uh, in electrical and electronics engineering from VIT University of Uh Post that, I worked in uh, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra for about uh, uh, five years in the uh, you know vendor development domain. And now uh, I'm working in Maruti uh, as a product cost management uh, in the product basically in the product cost management uh, uh, you know uh, domain. And uh, so total experience is about five and a half, uh, like uh, uh, like five and a half years. And uh, I plan to apply uh, for the, for next year. I mean, uh, for 2023 or 2024. So basically, yeah, that's that's about you know my my profile as such. Uh, so my uh, like specifically my uh, area of uh, like geographies of interest is predominantly uh, Canada, UK, and. Uh, mm, like these two countries specifically, then maybe a uh, US also a few colleges there. So, uh, so could you help me uh, like uh, uh, as to which all colleges or what what kind of uh, colleges can can I target uh, specifically in these uh, areas? Sure. Okay. Um, but before that, do you have a list of prospective universities that you want to target? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a broad. I I do have a broad outline on, on that. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I do have a broad outline on on the programs that I that I plan to uh, target. Uh, okay. Yeah, but basically because of you know the my my GMAT score, like I I have I have written I had written one attempt. Now I, I'm planning to give another attempt. Basically because that was not finalized, so I could not uh, you know have my uh, list of schools in a concrete uh, manner. Mm -hmm. So see, when it comes to deciding the list of schools, it it becomes important to know, uh, you know, the the round uh, the round or basically the year when you want uh, year in which you want to sort of begin your MBA. So would you like to apply, you know, uh, this year and sort of begin uh -huh. next year, or are you willing to apply next year? 
uh as of now uh, both options are open for me uh, i had initially planned to do it like apply this year and then uh, start next year uh, mm-hmm. but because of certain delays in in giving my gmat and other things i i, I like i'm i i was talk, targeting round 2 but i'm slightly late for round 2 that's that's what i feel so uh, i'm okay with applying this year going next year or even next year as well no i think i think you know like you mentioned uh, you are uh, you are scoring in the range of you know 700 to 760 I think right. I think you can target round two this year as well. Okay. Yeah. See, because all, almost all the almost all all these you know top notch MBA schools they have they all of them have their you know round two deadlines you know of um, in January. So it, it's 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 good that you know you apply in uh, round two and see what happens and then probably if if you get into the school of your choice. or like two three schools of your choice you can obviously pay the deposit and then commence your mba but then you know if if that doesn't work out there is always you know uh, that there is always september 2023 uh you right. know or, or probably october 2023 for round one so so i think i think this is this is good. this is you know this this looks like a better approach because primarily because of primarily because uh, of you know uh, your gmat score range at the moment and okay. when it comes to yeah when it comes to schools uh, when, when it comes to schools in canada uh, uk and a few schools in the uh, in the us as well i i'll i'll just start off with uh, uh, uk because it is it is becoming a student favorite destination uh, so yes i mean in the uk there are schools like uh, London Business School, Oxford, and Cambridge for your MBA. These are the three schools um, I think that that you should be that should be on your target list. Uh, I mean, if you are looking for MBA programs in the UK, another very very good option is INSEAD. I mean, it's in Fontainebleau, uh, and not exactly in UK, but I mean, if you like, let's say, because INSEAD has got this global network, you know, you can. If you are an uh, if if you are an NCR MBA graduate, you can get a job anywhere in this world. Anywhere, trust me. Anywhere. My uncle, uh, who's Mackenzie, yeah. Southeast Asia head, he's an NCR graduate as well. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. So from from what I from what I understand, if you if you are if if you sort of are willing to um, you know apply for MBA programs in the UK, I think NCR should also be a part of that list. apart apart from that you know in canada best is rotman as we all know obviously yeah yes but recently you know uh, recently you know we've had people getting accepted uh, to you know to wharton but canada is creating all sorts of problems uh, you know typically to indians you know they are not giving visas okay so that is something that you should be looking at as well and you know like is like, like i mean us you know see for for mba i think uh, um, you know uh, nothing against canada, but because they are causing all sorts of problems to to sort of uh, when it comes to obtaining the visa i think um, uk and usa is something that you should be targeting if not you know in cert france okay okay understood uh, i mean and even from uh, i mean from a post mba perspective also canada you're saying is is not favorable at at the moment no from from the post mba perspective everything is good uk is good even us is good canada is also good but okay. the problem with canada is that they are not giving visas i mean uh, it, it, you know in the past few months i have i have you know come across three of our own students who have who have been uh, who have been you know uh, accepted at at york and you know at rotman and i think one was uh, one got accepted i can't i can't recall the name of the school but yes it was a recognized canadian school and you know they 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 sort of rejected his visa oh okay yeah. so so this is big because obviously you know indians we are an over over represented uh, co- community there in canada right yeah so but people usually go spend because they come from punjab and people go to canada left right and center from here so <laughs> is it something that it, is it something that's a recent development that's that's not a that's yeah i mean uh, a, a visa rejection right 
Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's a latest development. Yeah. Okay, that's strange yeah, to hear. Yeah. So, yeah, if, if, you, yeah. if you are targeting Canadian schools, so Rotman is good college. Definitely, it's a good college. Uh, but if you want to work and stay in Canada, if you if you want to work in any other part of the world, then Rotman will not be the right choice. Then you should target the better schools, at, like better better colleges, as you are getting good scores anyway. Like if you are scoring seven fifty, seven sixty. Target tier one colleges, whether they are in UK, US, or in Europe. So uh, for for fall 2023 intake, round two deadlines either are in first Jan for some colleges or for some colleges in second week of Jan. So right. uh, you got one and a half months time. You can you can apply for fall 2023 intake in four or five colleges. Uh, that's the ideal time, like four or five applications you can complete in one and a half months. And then for okay. some colleges, you can target the January 2024 intake uh january 2024 intake so the round round one's deadline or round two deadline will be in march and uh may so uh that's that's what you also can target so within within period within the period of five or six months you can apply in six or seven good schools you will get the confirmation from all the schools by may and then you can decide okay which college you want to go so for january 2024 intake in does have this option columbia jtum columbia does have this option HEC Paris does have this option. So for three colleges, even IMD Switzerland, four colleges, uh, all these four colleges are pretty good colleges. You can work in Europe, you can work in Asia, you can work in Middle East. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and for you, for US colleges and UK colleges, you can you can apply for fall 2023 intake. So you, you got a good, very good good options. As Aryan told, like for for in UK, Cambridge, Oxford, LBS. Uh, in in us columbia jtum january 2024 intake you can you can target uh nyu stern with, with this great good score you can target uh duke yeah duke can be the right fit you can target even darden michigan okay. ross michigan ross is also one of the good college uh dartmouth tuck you can target even you can you can apply to yale also so five or six colleges in us uh and uh, and UK combine uh, for fall 2023 and other colleges for January 2024 intake. So that that can be the ideal approach. You will save you one year. Why start in September 2024? Okay, understood. Understood. Which will do you want to sort of continue uh, working as an engineer or, or like do you want uh, or engineering management or do you want to make a complete shift from engineering to sort of you know uh, general management or probably consulting or finance so you know uh, yeah so basically yeah currently uh like my role is uh, basically of uh like it's a techno commercial role it's not mm -hmm. an engineering role per se uh okay. like uh, it's it's been this like the same role i've been in or a similar role rather in for the last okay. you know uh, since since i started my career so it's almost five and a half years so uh as it's a techno commercial role so when i have uh, so we handle it's a mix of technology as well as from a business perspective but uh -huh. yes, uh, post MBA, I uh, want to now transgress from this. Now, currently, now it's uh, right now. I have a more of a commercial role. So from uh -huh. that, I want to build up, uh, go into this the, the application for this into strategy. So from here, I want to move to strategy consulting, hardcore strategy consulting. Okay. May may not be in the automotive domain. That that way, I'm flexible. But yeah, that is the end goal post MBA. That that's what I have in mind. Okay, then I think uh, any any good school uh, in the US or probably you know for for any kind of consulting, I think INSEAD is the best program. In okay. INSEAD is the best program for consulting. So I think you should you should consider INSEAD, you know, primarily because more than half of INSEAD's class uh, ends up working in consulting, um, and also because you know they they have this rich vein of alumni network already established in you know top notch mbb consulting firms so it 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 makes it it makes it very easy if you are an ncr mba student to sort of you know uh, to sort of start working in the consulting domain so yeah, i think you should add ncr to that list and you have you are scoring in that range as well so if you can just get a 740 or like let's say a score of 750 finally you know you have a pretty decent uh, chance to get into the MBA. Understood. Fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
do you have any other questions for us uh no i, I think yeah i yeah i have not nothing more i, I think uh, i got uh, whatever i wanted i just had one question you know and there is that comes from a place of probably me not having as much knowledge on that aspect so let's say if ujwal applies to some of these deadlines you know that that come up in jan Jet- in in january so within a month and a half so and and if it doesn't work out does it have any impact if he applies to those programs later in any of the later cycles no it, no okay it, it doesn't matter actually some some universities will you know uh, 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 straight away mention that the applicants are not allowed or mm-hmm. uh, in the in the same admission cycle but it generally doesn't happen okay so because if, if you are something that they don't take into account no because if you are if you are uh, applying for two different intakes it doesn't matter and you know you are not obviously not allowed to reapply during the similar during the same intake be it at any university any course okay yeah as long like as you get, he get acceptance it's fine if he does not in case mm-hmm. that he can apply anyway next year again in yes. september october targeting round one okay. yeah yeah he not be losing anything in sense yeah. all right so from those from that perspective you kind of guided that you know no harm in applying this year as well yes yes yeah. okay. this is yeah. why i suggested him both options also like yeah. 2024 options so for that that uh, january 2024 he can target round one like for columbia j term uh, round one will be in may or june for ncr round one is in uh, march for january 2024 in day and the colleges which does have only the fall option he can target round two which will be in like uh, first week or second week of january okay. and i think four or five applications he can complete in one and a half months so that that can be the ideal, ideal time timeline all right yeah yeah cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, guys. Uh, really informative. Uh, I think I have all my doubts uh, cleared. So th- thank you so much. Right, Ojwal was a pleasure interacting with you. Like, and, likewise. Yeah. And if you have, you know, any doubt, I think. Uh, uh, are you part of the one-on-ones as well? Uh, um, mm, one... I don't think so. I think I just was able to kind of get in touch with him. Okay, like while back. to connect with Hitka, a uh, separate one-on-one, so she can do the profile evaluation for round two or uh, January 2024 intake, or even for 2024 intake for round one, which will be in September, mm-hmm. October. She can, I think, you can get insights from her if you want. Yeah, yeah, sure, def- definitely. I, I think I can. Uh, I mean, take all the details from Anshuman uh, here on. Right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Sure, fine okay. thank, thank you thank you so much guys um, thank thank you anjuman for this opportunity thanks a lot take care Ujwal. and and let me get back to you regarding the session in it yeah 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 okay okay, okay. thank you I, i'm logging on bye bye thanks <laughs>uh hi anshuman so i think uh, there are no more uh, candidates i think yeah, they were, they were yeah i think that will be it. okay others were they were supposed to kind of join but i don't they they're right now not available okay, so okay. let's call it that yeah uh-huh. so hitka is doing the one on one uh, with your candidates so uh, we are done here so yeah if if they if they do have any 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 other questions uh, if they couldn't answer here uh, you can ask them to get in touch either with aryan or me or hitka yes uh, you have our numbers okay. and so they can reach out to us on whatsapp or on email the way they want and okay. uh, we would love to schedule the call or answer their questions yes definitely definitely so hubert got actually late uh, because his flight landed at 9:30 mm-hmm. so, uh, no no issue i think because the number of students was fewer this itself became a one on one right and probably the other people just or i think it went pretty well the kind of one on one yes yes definitely yeah, uh, amount of time to get their question answered uh, because if there were many candidates so sometimes yeah this this wouldn't have been possible had there yes. been like yes yes, like yes definitely yeah so i think yeah. they got exclusivity and i think all of them are yeah. happy yes yes I, i i feel that as well and thanks for answering those you know because all of them had their own sets of different questions yeah regarding the ea the previous just two days back one of our, i i told her name claudia so she got accepted to stanford msx and she got 164 uh, mm. in year. so uh, even uh, yeah. one of the coach 
uh, Bia. She's she from Brazil. So mm -hmm. she has a very good relation with the Stanford MSX admissions team. So okay. She keeps meeting them, the admissions director and all. So they uh -huh. even told, told her. So if anyone is uh, anyone is applying from India for a Stanford NSX program, the school right. we are looking for minimum one one fifty eight minimum. Yeah, and she's a Mansi is a very bright student, and she's she has had an exquisite profile over the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. So if and she gets like one sixty, she can get a Stanford MSX. But with one fifty six, one fifty eight, is ten like this a mighty Sloan fellow, very very good mm -hmm. chances. Okay, cool, cool. And even she can she can target one more program, which is uh, USC Marshall one year MBA. They call uh -huh. it ER MBA. So generally, they they take candidates in that program, uh, all like highly experienced candidates who do have ten yeah. plus year of work ex. So yeah, she yeah. can target that program also one year STEM certified program that can be a very good program for her if she wants to work in US. Cool. I'll let her know this. So yes, she is actually under the weather right now, but. Uh, you know, she just I joined. Just the one, name but... of all these school, uh, USC Marshall. Yeah, yeah, that'll be good. Also, also Anshuman, um, um, for Harsimran, it's better that we make her apply to you know the various masters master's program, program, yeah. US masters programs because, uh, frankly speaking, five hundred to five ninety range, it, it it's going to be an uphill task to sort of. Uh, so you know, make the thing with the thing with Harsimran is it's not okay. that she's bad academically no sometimes what happens is yes uh -huh. when we look at it from the perspective 500 to 590 yeah it does it does not at times take a lot to let's say to go from 590 to a 700 in my experience there are right. some tweaks that are good enough which are more on the mental side of it uh -huh. that because they have the conceptual knowledge and they have developed the skills over these over this time so it's not like she, it's not possible for her to kind of you know end up in that 700 or 720 plus bracket that's why we're working on that but that being said i think it makes a lot of sense to not have the options limited to Absolutely. just the effort mba so yes that makes a lot of sense she can yeah. target even very good colleges like aryan got into telog uh aryan got into hec so yeah. these colleges for master's program one year program or two year program can yeah. Can give her better ROI. Like if, if someone yeah. gets to HEC Paris, mm -hmm. the master's one year master's program, or even LBS, Kellogg, uh, all these colleges, uh, they can start working in London or in Dubai, can start earning like in Indian currency 80, 90 lakh package. Easily, uh, easily. Yeah. And with HEC, Kellogg, and LBS, uh, or in CR masters in management, you can you, mm. can, you can join McKenzie, BCG Bay, and as a junior associate. Yeah. And uh, after two or three years, you will become the consultant, and that's what you will do after doing an MBA. Even if you if you do from yeah. Harvard, you will join the McKinsey. You will you will start working as an associate only. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that that can be the very fair options. Even get if, if I'm get, sure she, if she's she, doing the one on one, right? Her yeah. 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 So I'm sure that she'll. But for deferred MBA, it is, uh, even the seven thirty is lesser i will say absolutely no i just I, I just didn't want to you know sound rude that is yeah. why i was just using 730 as a benchmark 730 and above but at the same point of time i tried to make myself self very clear mm. that no, i think you did i think you did and uh i'll also because uh, say, obviously i'm not as aware about this program as you guys are but i i am a tad aware and i know that you know the students who get in probably have a score of 750 or in in more than that course. and i give you like a brief idea about anshuman the deferred mba program the kind of competition if she applies uh, will be facing so one of our mm -hmm. candidate uh, he's german guy manuel he's mm -hmm. working with us mm -hmm. so he got like he did his uh, masters uh, from london school of economics see the college first mm -hmm. compare lse with srm or any indian college mm -hmm. His uh, GRE is 336, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he got the like pre placement offer from McKenzie already. He's working with McKenzie. 336, I think, is an equivalent of seven, what is it, 750 seven, or 760? Yeah, 770. 770, okay. Yeah. Okay. And he's, he, his work, he did his one internship with the European Central Bank. He worked with Goldman two months internship. And generally, these candidates get very good in 
like internships also all brand name on their cv and the pre 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 placement offer from one of the tier one consulting or finance company so they can show okay why they want to defer mba because they say hmm. they have to work with this company for two years and then i will start my mba after two years so you should have plan also what you want to do uh, in two year gap and mm -hmm. he's with mckenzie so obviously by the time he will be starting his mba he will already be consultant and mckenzie will be paying for his mba so okay. the kind of pro profile these colleges are looking for different MBA programs are hmm. like competitive. Even Aryan, one of your friend who came to one on one last last month, uh, Manish. In Manish, yeah. he's he's coming for the one on ones tomorrow as well. Okay, uh, so yeah. that guy is from Ashoka University. He yes. also got I think three thirty six GRE. No, 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 no. He scored three thirty. Three thirty. Okay. And yeah. uh, like he was with Antler, uh, that uh, VC firm in Bangalore. So Aryan, just just uh, just a question out of my curiosity: Why did you go for GRE over GMAT? So because uh, you know the kind of programs that I was targeting, same deferred MBA. Because with my GMAT score, I got accepted at HEC, ESEC. All, so you have given GMAT programs. as well? Yeah, I gave GMAT okay. as well, and I was not happy. I was not happy. I'm a fool, you know. I'm actually a fool when I say this, but yeah, I, I wasn't really happy uh, last year, and I decided to take it a notch higher. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, GMAT I took twice. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I I took the GMAT exam twice, and you know, uh, for you know, if I would have gone gone forward, uh, you know, uh, if if I would have uh, you know sort of uh, decided to apply for the deferred MBA programs with a higher GMAT, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the requirements would have been around 750 760 and when when i when i opened my books again i did not feel like studying you know complacency uh -huh. keeps in when you have sort of uh, you know got decent scores uh, on your first two attempts so that yeah. is why i decided to you know uh, uh, do something completely new and that is that, that that is when i sort of start preparing for the gr okay okay cool cool yeah but yeah. then but then it did not materialize. Uh, deferred MBAs did not materialize, and then, mm. yeah. Okay, and in your experience, you found GRE much easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Quant was quant. I, I wasn't even practicing quants. I was just focusing on the verbal side of things. Mm. Yeah, because, quant. If you prepared prepared for GMAT quant, GRE yeah. quant is almost. Yeah, and GMAT. Almost. GMAT, GMAT quants, uh, you know, I scored 49 on my first attempt and 50 on the second attempt. Right. Yeah. So I was pretty clear about, you know, uh, yeah, uh, about my, uh, about the quant, quant side of things. And that's why I was focusing primarily on, on verbal. And what was your verbal score on GMAT? In that uh, case? Uh, GMAT verbal score, uh, GMAT verbal score, second attempt was 37 and first attempt was 35. So in, in, with, with a Q, 50 and v37 wasn't it a better score than gre 328 i mean uh i don't know i mean uh, Hubert when we converted had, it might well have been i think i think you know because it was a what q50 v37 is 710 720 what is it it is 710 710 okay yeah so, and hubert said might hubert be roughly said, similar yeah maybe yeah, almost you know. yeah uh, 328 hubert said to go with 328 okay yeah okay so this this year when i um, applied i uh, you know i've been using my 328 and not the 710 okay yeah mm -hmm. because generally what happens uh, for the gre like 660 or 70 percent candidates are taking gmat and the candidates uh, who take the GRE, they tried first GMAT and then they go for go with the GRE. So they tend to score lesser. So if you see the even the tier one colleges, if their average GMAT is 730, their average GRE will be 323, 324. Mm, yes. So and the second thing is also uh the most of the colleges they publish their average GMAT score on their website. Uh, they do not publish their average GRE score. Now mm. they, in the US they started publishing, but in Europe still they are not publishing, like in CR. NCR does not publish their average GRE score. So they okay. get the liberty, even if some if the candidate is good, but okay. GRE score is less. They, they kind of hate that candidate because this will not affect their average GMAT score. And hmm. uh, because average GMAT score is part of the ranking. So when the FT comes to the hmm. ranking, they, they see uh, all these things. What are your class average GMAT score? They can kind of 
Yeah, so they can they will, move, move their way around the GRE score in that sense. Colleges can be lenient with you if you do have little less GRE score, okay. but you profile. So I think that was the uh, region uh, like 320 yeah. score. 328 is a good GRE score. So like last last month, uh, I I met with HEC admissions team. Hmm. So she told uh, if someone is applying from India for master's program, it, they should have at least 710 GMAT or 720. If yeah. his or her GMAT is less than 710, they will not even look into the file. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, she told GRE score 318 or 320 will be okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes you can get little advantage if you do have one or two points less in GRE, but good profile, overall good profile. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Because GMAT, for instance, the makers of GMAT, GMAT goes out of the way to say that you know scores cannot be compared. Yeah. But the universities do. Obviously. They, they do, they do, they they do all fair, fair <laughs> all sort of things. Uh, but GMAT generally affects colleges' ranking, so colleges are not lenient with GMAT, GMAT mm -hmm. school, especially the tier one colleges. But with GRE, they can be. Okay, got it, got it. Mm -hmm. Great. So you know, I'll I'll just share. So what I need to do with Ujwal is just share Hitika's contact, right? Yeah, uh, share Hitka's contact uh, or Ujwal's CV. So Hitka will connect with Ujwal and uh, we'll we'll do the one on one. Uh, probably for the round two, if he if he wants to apply in round two, uh, mm -hmm. he can start the application because uh, I think one one month is left. He can he can complete four or five colleges application in one month for for US programs including LBS in UK, and then uh, for rest of the programs he can he can go for uh, fall twenty twenty four and take. Uh, January 2024 intake, like colleges like HEC or NC.